welcome to Joy of Books with me, Miss Joy. Today's novel is The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, released in 1939 and totaling 277 pages. It is a classic crime novel. Sharing his views on this book today is author and teacher T.C. I love crime novels and thrillers, so I am particularly interested in hearing your views on this book, T.C. What can you tell us about The Big Sleep? Well, the first thing I can say, Miss Joy, is that this is a cracking read. It really is a classic detective story. And I love the fact that Raymond Chandler himself has an interesting backstory. He was actually an oil executive during the Great Depression, sadly lost his job and went into writing. So there you go for those people out there who suffer the tribulations and trials of life. This will certainly be an example of something good that can come out of something bad. Without the Great Depression, you would not have got Raymond Chandler's wonderful writing and his inimitable writing style. Of course, he created his character, Philip Marlowe, and he really jumps off the page. He is the original private detective, an iconic figure in literature, particularly American literature as well. This idea of the hard-boiled detective in fiction really stems from Chandler's book, The Big Sleep. The book is set in Los Angeles, California, but it's that bleak California. It's not the, the sun-kissed California that we associate uh, here in England with that culture. It's a 1930s, kind of almost dystopian California post-depression era. So you get this very cynical view of the society, again, much imitated, not just in detective uh, stories, but also, of course, a lot in films as well, this uh, imitated often copied view, but uh, but really bettered, I, I would suggest. So the story revolves around Philip Marlowe, this private detective. He's called by a General Sternwood, this dying millionaire, who's at the subject of a blackmail plot with his uh, two daughters. So he's trying to get to the bottom of that. The oldest daughter's husband, Rusty, has gone missing, and General Sternwood has quite a fondness for this character, Rusty. So he, he really wants to get to the bottom of that as well although he doesn't tell uh, the character Marlowe that that's the reason why he's been hired. Uh, so already you probably get an idea of these different and complex plot strands that again are a hallmark of Raymond Chandler's writing. But this book really was the, 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 the first, uh, the original and the best, in my opinion, uh, with regard to this type of crime fiction and thriller. Uh, so the... Uh, Philip Marlowe goes to investigate. He goes to a bookstore owned by a chap called Geiger. Um, now, of course, in the Great Depression, it's known for Prohibition era, but there are other things going on as well beneath the surface. And, and that's what I like about this book is that you just get that sense of everything bubbling underneath the, uh, the, the, the words it's themselves. So Geiger's bookstore, for example, is a front for literature of an indecent nature which is being sold and Geiger is blackmailing the purchasers of that indecent literature. So you can see that's already uh, uh, thickened the plot itself. But we've got all sorts in here. You've got casino bosses, henchmen, you've got promiscuous ladies, illicit encounters, double crosses. It's all going on. It sounds like it's difficult to keep track of, but I think therein lies the challenge of this type of text the idea that uh, you are keeping track of the characters, you are asking questions of them, you know, you are asking, genuinely asking the questions, can I believe this character when he's speaking to my character? And in fact, uh, our character Marlowe himself doesn't give anything away, often uh, given the, the very little information to uh, the people that he's conversing with. So it's a really interesting style of narrative and one that, as I say, has been often copied uh, in fact, the copy here that I have is um, afforded by Ian Rankin, okay, so himself, uh, known for wonderful literature related to the crime drama series. But uh, for him to write the forward for Raymond Chandler's The Big Sleep will tell its own story as to how Chandler is regarded in literature, especially uh, crime thriller as a genre. Uh, what else we got here? We got uh, femme, the femme fatale. Okay, so again, this uh, this kind of flawed female character. Uh, we have those here. Either of the daughters, take your pick. You've also got the casino boss's wife. Um, again, I'm not going to give too much away in terms of of plot and spoilers, 
so I'll take you back to the Great Depression. Uh, you have to remember that in that era, money was scarce. Uh, life generally was cheap. People at that time, as they probably are now, were capable of incredible cruelty. So nothing was really off the table with regard to the, the crimes committed in this particular novel. As I said earlier, Los Angeles itself is described in a very bleak manner. Uh, the corruption, the kind of idea of the dark streets, the incessant rain is really described well by Raymond Chandler here. Even the idea of the American dream is lambasted, the, the kind of dark side, if you like. People getting rich through oil, but maybe not spending their money in the correct way. Uh, people perhaps taking advantage of uh, what might have been perceived to be lesser people in society um, of that era. So we have these uh, the idea of racism, sexism. Uh, these these would be themes of the novel, of course, at the time, perhaps not, not so much uh, prominent as they are now in terms of our awareness of these these issues. Uh, even the description of Marlowe himself, I won't give it all, but the uh, last part of it, he says, um, I'm a native son, born in Santa Rosa, both parents dead, no brothers or sisters. When I get knocked off in a dark alley sometime, if it happens, as it could to anyone in my business, nobody will feel that the bottom has dropped out of his or her life. I mean, I think that description of Marlowe could describe really many people during the Great Depression era uh, in the USA, but particularly this lonely guy in uh, Amer American crime in that, uh, that era. Wonderful character, really jumps off the page. Uh, in terms of his writing style, very descriptive, uh, uses a direct speech effectively. It doesn't overuse it. You're not going to find a whole page of it anywhere. It's, it's really well judged, in my opinion. Uh, what I particularly like is his descriptions of uh, places. So everywhere the, uh, the protagonist goes, he will give a really detailed description of that place, which, which I, I think really appeals to kind of vi the visual uh, learners among us. And uh, you can really picture these these places. Uh, and, we, and we get around as well. You know, he takes us to these different parts of Los Angeles, the dark underbelly from organized crime bosses to the wealthy elite. You know, we, we're, we're taken uh, almost like a voyeur into these dark corners of American society in 1930s California. Uh, of course, the title itself, The Big Sleep, is a euphemism uh, for, for death. Um, and again, that, that's uh, that the idea that, that death, well, life is cheap and death could come at any time. It's kind of accepted in this novel in a way that it's not now. Death, it would be a surprise now. People live longer, but in the big sleep, it, it's kind of commonplace. Um, I'd say every other chapter, uh, somebody uh, falls into a big sleep. But uh, of course, I won't give away whom. Um, and in terms of uh, Raymond Chandler himself, of course, hugely successful. Many of his books, if not all of them, have been turned into films at some point. And, you know, really, he is, he is the benchmark. And this book is the benchmark for all crime thrillers, for sure. Anything that you're reading post Chandler, you, you, you cannot help but look back and compare it with The Big Sleep for, for any aspect of it. Plot twists, uh, characterization, description, imagery, it's all in there. So I wholeheartedly would recommend this book, Miss Joy. Uh, if you, I know you enjoy your crime thrillers, so uh, I, I, no, I, unreservedly, I would recommend this book. Well, thank you very much for your review of the book, TC. Yes, it is clear that you loved the book and it's perfect for lovers of crime thrillers. The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler is available from all good book outlets. Thank you for joining me and please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Joy of Books.